so what happened? So I'm standing there in front of the Finsby Park Mosque. Mosque. And uh, I just finished filming their Friday prayers. With their permission? With their permission. Shot an interview with the uh, e imam. imam. I'm heading outside to get a crowd shot of that and some exteriors. Uh -huh. Put the camera hey, up be, on my shoulder. Be the cameraman. Put the, put the camera up on my shoulder. The camera's kind of face to the side. I'm talking to somebody in this way. A man comes up, grabs me from behind the neck, grabs me in, around the chest. What kind of man? Guys dressed in uh, a Muslim, Muslim man. Dressed in Muslim attire. Dressed in Muslim. Two hundred men dressed in Muslim attire are standing around. And one of them grabs me from behind. Another one puts his hands around my neck. Another one grabs me around the chest. The third one. What did they want from you? They wanted the tape inside of my camera. Did they ask you? They asked me. Before they touched you, did no, they ask you? No, they did not. What country was this in? This was in London, England. London. Finsby Park Mosque in London, England, a place where they now say, a place where they now say that uh, Americans are not welcome. When you walk down the street, oh, nice. when you walk down the street in the in the, in the downtown, in the city part of there, down to one of the city blocks, there are stalls set up in the middle. You feel like you're in like Morocco. All the stores. All the writing on all the stores is 100% Arabic. Arabic. All halal meats and all of that. That's okay. So they're good restaurants in yeah, the neighborhood if they I'm welcome if they welcome Anglo's, but do they? No, they do not. Unless you have permission to be there, you're not welcome. Like a like a ghetto. Like a ghetto. A gang neighborhood, a mafia neighborhood. Exactly. It was definitely like I had been accosted by the mob, mm. by a gang. Bottom line is, they. You want to pause? No. You get to hold here. The bottom line is, they uh, tried to wrestle my camera away from me to get the tape from it. The London police officer, female police officer, approached me, asked me if I needed some help. Yeah. She said, she said, do you, do you need some assistance? And I said, you think? So she said, you men need to take your arms off of this gentleman. And of course, they just they just ignored. Do I need to hold my own microphone? They yeah, just watch me. off a handling noise. Yes, sir. I've done this once or twice. Not not this side. I'm on your side normally. And, um, and so they, they asked me to give them the camera. Were the men who were attacking you intimidated uh, by the policewoman? Not at all. The policewoman, who was uh, uh, only armed with a club, uh, ran kind of ran for cover. About 30 seconds before I thought I was going to be taken inside and taken down 20 floors to the dungeon, I heard some sort of Arabic chanting behind me, and all hands dropped off of me, and I was left alone. One of the men, one of the Muslim men, dressed in Muslim garb, in a robe of some sort, called me inside, took me inside of the mosque, back inside of the mosque where I had been shooting, freely shooting, with no restrictions whatsoever. And I was told that um, once I was inside that I would be safe. And when I got inside they said, okay, now give us your tape. And I said, no, I can't give you the tape. Knowing in my mind, that I had just been to Scotland Yard prior to this interview, interviewing people at Scotland Yard about how bad this mosque was. And so there I was with a dilemma, not enough time to swap out the tapes, how you would carry a spare tape, which I do, to swap it out, fake it, and give them the blank one. Um, he made me actually sit on the floor and play the tape back in the camera and record color bars, flip the camera to color bars and record and flip it back over each one of the um, suspected terrorists who were at that, at that Friday uh, prayer. Well, as I've come to find out that there were more people on that list, including as I suspect, and I think I remember that the shoe bomber was one of the people that was in that, 
Richard Richard Reed was in that mosque on that day. It was sometime in 2000 and 2000. I think it was in two, in 2000. It was prior to 9. It was prior to 911. Prior to 911. Yes. The coal bombing. How did you come to be in a radical church, a radical a mosque before 9/11? I'm shooting a story on uh, on on how Muslims are being looked at by the rest of the free world. Uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network. Was it because you were from the CBN that you think that they were that may be hostile? No, it's because I was from CBN that they let us in. The gentleman that we did the interview with, the sheikh who was there at the time, who is now in prison, um, told us that the deal was that he didn't care what we asked them, and he would tell us exactly what we wanted to hear, which included, if you are, he explained jihad. He said, if you are not a Muslim, then you are, you are a Muslim or you're not. And if you're not, then you, then we are jihad against you. You get out of my neighborhood, you get out of my church, and jihad is to get you out. That was his quote. Get you out. Jihad was his way to get you out by kill you if we have to. That was a quote. Now, the reason why he said that was because what their plan was, was when this show aired, and it, the story aired, when the, when the story aired worldwide, that they would take the video and they would redub in their own translation of the English and say whatever it is they wanted to say. So they could use their, they would use it for their purposes and they would let us use the interview for our purposes. So that was kind of interesting. And that was, and that was, um, that was probably two or three months before the coal bombing, the USS Coal in Kuwait. It was me and, and a producer, just two of us. No, the producer was inside having a spot of tea while I was out being accosted. Now, since they have since been back, not I haven't gone back to that particular mosque, but they have since been back to that mosque, and it's under new management. And they say it's you know very blah blah blah. You know it's very friendly now, but uh, it was it was quite an ordeal. But they haven't eradicated that element from British. Uh, Islamic society have they? No, as a matter of fact, uh, it's it's a very prominent place for them to recruit from, and and that's not a that's not a hidden fact. I mean, that area is is well known for finding people in the colleges, especially that are down and out, you know, don't have a lot of family or whatever, or, you know, looking for a way to be part of something. It's 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 definitely gang mentality. CBN News. If it wasn't for if, if it wasn't for CBN News, that story would probably have never gotten out. And the uh, and Scotland Yard actually used our tape, used the footage that I shot to help um, put a, a couple of those guys in jail. And I believe one of them is in Gitmo right now. That would be um, the shoe bomber. I think he's in Gitmo. But how could your uh, your uh, tape uh, help them when you had to record over it? All I had to record over was the close-ups of some of the faces of some of the terrorists. Uh, I didn't have to record over the whole thing, just the close-ups, because I shot some close because I was given free will. So the only thing I had to record over was a couple of close-up shots. If, if the British authorities had been more vigilant, do you suppose that they could have averted many of the 7-7 uh, bombings and things like this, the terror in Britain? I'm not one to speculate on that, but I, I can tell from my own experience that they weren't very effective at keeping 12 guys from harming me. That took, that took somebody from the inside to, to, to finally realize that I was out there and what situation I was in from the inside to come and rescue me. The British uh, police were not any help at all. So what happened after that policewoman went away? Did she not try and get reinforcements to come in? back up to, to save you? No, she just walked away. The two of them just walked away. You mean a policeman also? Yeah, there was two of them. The policeman did not come close. It, with an earshot of me, he stood off in the distance. But they were both there um, investigating a follow-up on a car, uh, just a fender bender. 
and they happened to see what was going on. So they started to approach, he stopped, and she came up to help me. He, he wouldn't approach me. But after she saw you were in trouble, why didn't she come back with him to help you? That's a good question. I'd like to have an answer to that. You think about that? I have thought about that many times, and I can tell you, today, almost 12 years later, anytime I hear the, the Muslim Arabic call to prayer, puts the hair up on the back of my neck, and I'm ducking under a table somewhere, just like these guys who go to war and hear a door slam, they hide under a table. I now know what that feels like. Was that a fringe element you feel in, uh, in uh, Muslim culture? Did that seem like just some bad eggs in, in the mosque that was ordinarily peaceful? No, this was 200 men at Friday prayers. This was their common way of, of dealing with people. It seemed like their everyday way of life. It was not any fringe element, any three guys who were not doing what everybody else was doing. This was their normal way of life. How do you think uh, journalists are doing now in reporting this situation? Both British, American, and international journalists are reporting the realities of this dynamic. I think because with other people besides me getting the story out, I think the more we get out, the more we educate people. And the more that people are educated, the better off we're going to be from an information standpoint. And the more knowledge is power, and the more knowledge we have about how they work and what they do, that'll help us to be able to not only get along with them, but also to keep an eye on them and, and not let them take us over. So now 10 years after 9-11, do we have that, uh, with that knowledge, how do you think we're doing in, in recognizing and defeating global jihadism? I don't think we're, matter of fact, I think we're worse than we were before, only because there's a lot of them and not enough of me out there showing with proof, uh, living proof of how it really is. The, the, the media hype is, uh, is built to protect them and there's not enough people with real experiences to say, hey, I know what it was really like because I was actually there and I was actually accosted and, and feared for my life. In London, England, I feared for my life from Muslims. Should that be that way? In a, in a house of worship. In a house of worship. In a so-called calm, peaceful, religious, and, the, and it, it makes me think of uh, Ground Zero, where the Presbyterian Church, I think it was Methodist or Presbyterian Church that was decimated by 9-11, they can't rebuild that, but there's a fight to allow a mosque to be built there, but all on common ground, all on common ground for the, for the mosque to be built, but not for the church that they knocked down, that can't be rebuilt there. That's interesting. Ten years after 9-11. I'm, I'm just as scared or more scared than I, I mean, when I go in the mall and I see somebody, the way they're dressed in the mall or a grocery store or whatever, I go the other way. Just based on, not based on hype, not based on a news story that I heard on, on TV or the radio, based on my own personal experience. They say that a, a conservative is a liberal who's been mugged, right? So maybe, maybe you just you, you have now what they call uh, shell shock, and uh, because you had some bad eggs, but did it seem to you like those guys were an exception in that in that mosque? No, they were definitely not an exception. They they were definitely mainstream, and I know some some Muslim Christians, and they they agree with my assessment 100 percent. CNN News, you, do you think the news directors at the BBC understand what you, what you now know? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, would, I would guess that there's probably by this time more people that have uh, investigated that particular uh, mosque, which is the reason why I would imagine that they it was changed from the top down. And um, I don't know, like I said, I haven't been back there, so I don't know what the current state is there, but I can tell you when I was there, it was, uh, I, I did not feel like I was in London. I did not feel like I was in a, a suburb of London. I felt like I was in downtown Morocco. Or Afghanistan, or, uh, not, yeah, exactly. Al Qaeda Al for sure. Yeah. And they walk among us. And they walk among us. You're, you're welcome.